How's it going, everybody? This is Aaron the Pedantic. Uh, today, I wanted to talk about travel in D and D, uh, specifically because um, I've I've just had it on my mind a lot lately. Um, you know, travel is something that we do in D and D in every game. You're just you know, from uh, no, no matter what kind of game you're playing, you're going to be getting from one place to another. You're going to be traveling from one site to another, and we have to decide how is it how is it going to be handled that you get there. Uh, and we have kind of our conventional methods that we use. There's the the I guess we would just call it fast travel. We, you know, a lot of us are. are uh, used to the idea from games like uh, from video games even you know Skyrim and things like that where you know you, you say well I uh, let's go here okay well you get there it takes this much time you get there no problems we also have the point crawl which the point crawl is something that not a lot of people uh, are probably familiar with uh, people in the old school community have probably at least heard of it uh, I think it was uh, made um, I think it was coined by uh, Chris Kudelik of uh, the Hills Cantons blog. Uh, but the whole idea is that you have, instead of um, a hex map where you have, you know, everything mapped out from here to here to here, you have all of these different locations that are all on the map, uh, but they're just specific spots and they all have something interesting to do there. And so I would imagine, uh, I say it, I imagine because I don't really run point crawls. Um, I don't really, and I don't really run point, point crawls necessarily. Uh, then what I would imagine you would do then is you would have your random encounter checks. Uh, they would be on their way to a place. Maybe you roll to see if they get lost, but probably not because uh, well, if you do roll to see if they get lost, it's probably to see if maybe they end up on a branching path, maybe, uh, or it's to uh, see if there's a delay. Um, and ultimately the the sites that they are going to land on are supposed to be more interesting you know there's something to do is maybe some kind of challenge something for them to meet some kind of uh vista to look at you know something something of value to make them feel to kind of be this middle point where they understand that the, the world is a, is a large place a lot larger than it is if you just fast travel uh <laughs> here goes my phone uh but it's it's also uh one that has a lot of stuff to do Okay, so a lot of people are familiar with that. Maybe there are some checks here and there to see if you can find secret paths that have other little nodes and avenues and things like that. Maybe you can shave time off of your journey or accrue some other kind of benefit. But uh, that's that's a point crawl to my understanding. You should go check out the blog on that if you're if you're interested. He's actually done quite a few articles on it from what I've I've seen. Uh, and then we have the one that most of us are quite familiar with, and that is the hex crawl, where you have a giant map of hexes. You know each each hex is covering this much distance, uh, and you just ask the players which direction they travel. Um, you roll to see if they get lost. You roll encounters, uh, and if they get lost, then the uh, AD and D method is basically that you would see what direction they go. It would be randomly determined, and then you don't really tell them that they're lost. They just kind of have to figure it out because they're traveling off in a certain direction for so long that eventually it becomes apparent that they took a wrong turn somewhere. Now, uh, one of the things I wanted to talk about is I have seen a lot of people that use uh, things like random encounter checks on travel when maybe that may not be serving the purpose that they're wanting to serve. And sometimes... They may be better off just not doing it. Uh, so um, to me, the, the time that random encounters are useful, the, the things, the, the times that I would like to incorporate them in wilderness exploration specifically, uh, or travel rather, um, and I, I differentiate the two because to me, wilderness exploration means there's an intent that you're actually trying to, you're out in search of the unknown rather than uh, on a mission from one place to another place. Um, so... Whenever that happens, if you are using random encounters in the wilderness, uh, you have to remember you're dealing with a place where it's not like the dungeon where you have dungeon levels exactly, you know, where there's an expectation that if you're on uh, the first level of a dungeon, then you're probably not going to deal with anything too crazy. Uh, if you're on the eighth level of a dungeon, you're going to deal with crazy stuff. So you understand there that there is a uh, an, an escalation of intensity with the kinds of things that you encounter. Uh, but when it comes to being in the wilderness and having random encounters in the wilderness, there is no such expectation. I mean, uh, in the dungeon, you may encounter uh, 10 orcs. In the wilderness, you may encounter 300 orcs. 
And so it's, it's designed to be a very, very different place. You may encounter uh, an ancient red dragon just flying around and, no, oh, look, look, there's my snack right there. That's the kind of thing that you can encounter. And do you want that to be how your player characters meet their end? Is that something that is desirable for your table? And there are some purists that will say, well, uh, you're not supposed to be upset if you lose your character that way. That's part of playing the game. And I can see kind of where you're coming from. But at the same time, uh, you know, we have different ways we want to spend our time. Maybe it's maybe people are more interested in what they're able to do in the environment that they have a little bit more of an understanding about rather than the environment that, uh, you know, could be an absolute wild card. And you have nothing really that you can do about it. There are some people that will actually use zones of danger when it comes to their wilderness because they don't want to include such things that will just absolutely wreck an entire party and undo uh, sessions and sessions and sessions and sessions of work. And it's understandable. I think it's fair. Um, so if, if the problem is that they could feasibly, you could lose a character to a just a random out of nowhere wilderness encounter and that's undesirable then you probably shouldn't use them similarly similarly if the randomly random wilderness encounters are made such that they aren't going to be dangerous um what's the point you know what is what is the the, the actual point if you're going to include encounters where the only way that they're probably going to suffer any kind of serious casualties are if it happens all in this fight because you're not going to roll for additional fights during the day and because they're let's say you're playing fifth edition and they're pretty much they're fully healed after a night's rest and they have half of their hit dice back for short rests uh what's the point what are you really what are you really getting out of what's going on here you're you're you're, you're getting um you know some something for them to do uh, maybe that's something that's necessary. Maybe you don't really have a whole lot for them to do whenever they get to whatever location they're getting to. Uh, maybe you're just trying to impart the, the 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 feeling that the world is a dangerous place. But at the same time, I, I don't think that that's the uh, best avenue to go about it. I think that there are other ways that may be um, more beneficial. Now, I, I am positing this even though I will just say, for me... I would rather, and this is me being someone who has used random encounters in wilderness in 5th edition, I would rather make it so that they don't get all their health back after a full night's rest uh, so that these things do matter a little bit more. That's what that's the route that I would end up taking. Because I have felt the sting as I've, as I've played and as I've run games like 2nd uh, edition and BX where the players, they can get their full night's rest. You know how much HP they're getting? like one, they're getting like one HP back, maybe three. And then the cleric needs to spend most of their spells trying to get everybody caught up. So there are days and days and days of time where they're trying to replenish their lost resources. And in doing so, their spellcasters are pretty vulnerable. They really don't have a whole lot going for them because they're burning their first levels on cure light wounds. They're burning, uh, you know, the whatever cure moderate wounds is. It's been a while. <laughs> so much low level play. So not, not so much uh, moderate medium level play. It's not even medium level. It's like fourth or fifth. <laughs> I, think it's, I think it's a third level spell. But anyway, you get the idea. They're, they're burning all these spells in order to get people replenished because it's very important that they don't get to zero because in those classic games, getting to zero means you're pretty much dead. You, know, you don't really have this safety net. So it makes it so that uh, there's this huge tension when you're going from one place to another. You know, I had a game where uh, they had collected this uh, a, a nice, good uh, bit of treasure. You know, they're trying to bring it back to... Uh, bring it, bring it back to the, the 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 nice safe city, right? They're bringing it back to the city so they can, you know, sell their wares, you know, sell sell the jewelry, uh, get stuff identified, you know, replenish everything, rest, all that. And what happens? They're almost there. They have a random encounter. It has surprise, and it just absolutely destroys 
one of the PCs. Just boom. This guy was so close to getting his next level. Uh, in fact, uh, because I don't really use the restriction of how many levels they can gain all at once, he would actually would have gained multiple levels. And he was, he was like a level one character would have shot up to like level three or level four, uh, which, yeah, I know, some people are going to cry foul. But at the same time, it was devastating holy cow but there was so much tension whenever those dice were being rolled it was incredible you just don't really get that if you're not if you're not using those rules um where you know they, they actually have to mind those resources um that's so random encounters are, are a big thing getting lost now i'm just going to be straight up uh direct I, I actually would like to get more input from people that use the the traditional getting lost rules because I don't. Um, I haven't either. Um, I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with them. I just don't know if they would produce the kind of gameplay that I would like to have. Uh, I think that they would be perhaps better suited for a hex game. Um, and again, just to just to signal back, what they, the original ones were is that you would roll to see if you're lost and if you are lost, and you roll to see which direction they accidentally wander off to, and you don't tell them that they've gotten lost, you just kind of let them wait to figure it out. So potentially, you know, they're doing a hex map, and they're like, well, okay, so, oh, so this is another plains area, nothing here is another plains area. Uh, and then they keep going for a while. Then next thing they know, they spent about seven days uh, traveling in the absolute wrong direction. And maybe they don't even figure that out because maybe you didn't provide a completely uh, topographically keyed out map where they would be able to understand, oh, uh, th those should be mountains here. Why aren't there mountains? You know, if you're starting from absolute scratch and, and they're going from there, whew. Good God, I don't know that they'll ever ever figure it out. So you have to think about how much data am I giving them on the maps that they have? Do I include just, you know, what does the, the obvious terrain look like? One of the friends in the Discord pointed out that he'll point out the uh, the lines of the forest, uh, but not necessarily the, the, the insides, and it's obvious why, because, you know, you have uh, maybe some lakes, maybe some uh, small elven villages or, you know, things like that, that they should be able to happen upon if they're doing wilderness exploration. Um, I think it's uh, I think it's an interesting thing. So I'd like to see what people have to say about their experiences actually using it. For me, uh, they generally travel along the roads uh, and and or the, the the rivers. So it's really not that common that they would get terribly lost. But we're not engaging in hex crawl behavior exactly. Uh, it's just that I'll I'll ask them which direction they're going and what route they're taking, and if they want to cut through the wilderness, then you know we'll do that. But otherwise, if they're just traveling along the road, then we use whatever procedures we have there, um, and it's worked pretty well so far. But uh, if I were to roll to see if they got lost, if they weren't just taking an obvious road or an obvious path along the river, then I would uh, probably just use it as a delay. It's been you know. Uh, it, it took you 1d4 days to realize that you were off path. Uh, now, now we're going to pick up where you left off. You know, do some rolls to see if they survive the things that happened in those days. Uh, and then and then pick it up from there, perhaps something like that. Uh, but you would have to make sure that that days matter. And this is where the last thing is, last thing that I want to consider, and that is rations. Rations are one of those things that I, I'm i not sure that I uh, fully believe in using them the conventional method. And I think it's something, maybe that's an entire different video. I think I'll save it for a different video. But if you're not tracking rations, then the days probably don't matter that much. Uh, if you are tracking rations, they can matter a hell of a lot. Uh, you either have them or you don't, and you're gonna <laughs> you're going to start having some really bad things happen if you run out. Um, but, uh, you know, rations, um, that, that is a whole other thing. And then, and then there's just the idea that do you use a lot of ticking clocks in your game? Do you, do you set up things where if they don't uh, complete this objective by this day, then, uh, they fail. If you have a lot of those kinds of things, then it can be really, uh, grueling for the players, <laughs> Uh, whenever they are going into the, 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 you know, the travels because they just might not make it on time. And that can be frustrating, especially if you as a DM are having to remember, am I giving them enough time to do what they're doing now to hear about the, 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 the ticking time clock and for them to have enough time to get where I'm saying they need to be because, it is entirely possible people can do this because we are flawed human beings. It's entirely possible to give the players a timeline 
that they simply cannot meet unless you bend the laws of physics and say, well, maybe it took you a little bit less time than it should. <laughs> you, you made great time. I wonder why. Wow. Um, <laughs> you know, some of this stuff about the, the, uh, the tales about the, the airplanes getting lost in wormholes and traveling immense, you know, distances in serious amount of time or losing time. I think, I think there are stories about that as well. Uh, <laughs> that is another thing that you have to worry about. So uh, I just want to kind of hear what people have to say about how they handle travel. What are your thoughts on travel? Um, do you hate something? Do you love something? Just let me know what you have to say. I think it's an interesting topic. Um, if anybody has used the buy the book travel methods like for a long time and you've used them like crazy, I'd be interested in interviewing you, uh, bringing you on here and uh, listening to what you have to say so that maybe you can share some of your wisdom. Uh, thank you so much for your time. I hope that you all have a wonderful, wonderful week and uh, peace out.